سبيل الدموع سبيل مريح تنهد يا صاحي كي تستريح وبث الدعاء الخفي so, we, so that's one thing we've established is obviously the honor and respect we show. But how do we actually then practically apply al wala wal bara? If it's not how it's being highlighted in here, how should we go about it? Well, the first thing is quite clear that we have different types of relationships with people depending on circumstances. There are times when we are at war and there are times when we are at peace. And that's what we need to sort of bear in mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions um, with respect to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and Harun alayhi salatu wasalam when he sent them to Fir'aun. He said, Idhaba ila Fir'auna innahu tagha. Go to Fir'aun for indeed he is rebelled. That's fine, but how should the Anbiya address him? Faqula lahu qawlan layyina. Speak to him in a soft way, in a calm way in a kind way, in a merciful way. Why? لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى So that he may remember or he may have fear. So you can see here, this is speaking about someone who we now use Firon as a term to describe the oppressors on the earth. We say, oh, he is the Firon of today. And why do we use that? Because Firon was such a bad person. Yet here, Allah SWT is being advising the Anbiya to address them in a certain way. Um, likewise, we see, and that was in Surah Taha, Ayat number 43 and 44. Uh, I apologize if I'm not quoting verses to you. I'm sure you can easily find them or take my word for it. Likewise, we see in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayat number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we did not send you except as a mercy to Alameen. Does it say رَحْمَةً muslimin No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says رَحْمَةً alamin And Alameen does not even just limit itself to humans. Alameen includes within it trees. Alameen includes within it animals, plants, rivers, seas, atmosphere, the uh, jinn. Everybody is included in that. So Rasulullah was sent for what purpose? It says there, Wama arsal naka. We have not sent you except as a mercy to all the worlds. And we see a number of others. Fabima rahmati min Allah linta lahum wa law kunta fadhan ghaliz al qalb lan faddu min hawlik. This is with respect to the Sahaba that you are calm and merciful and softly spoken because had you been harsh and aggressive and hard hearted, lan faddu min hawlik. Your Sahaba would have left you. And you, you, it's not that you would have been oppressing them. No, because Allah SWT is not saying that. He's saying you would have been justified in saying that because they've not followed certain commandments you've given them or certain orders that you've given them and you expected them to be followed. So you had every right to be angry. But if you had behaved in that way, then they would have all left you. So instead, the best approach for you to take is a kind and merciful. Are we seeing this? Uh, you know, uh, is this how did Rasulullah not know about all these ayats of Al Wala Wal Bara? Of course he did. So then, how was he? This is how he was acting them out. This is how he was practically applying them. And this is what we need to be doing to practically apply it. Wala and Surah Al in Surah Al Ankabut, Ayat number seven. Wala to Jadilu Ahl Kitab illa Bilatiya Asan. And don't debate and argue with the Ahl Kitab except by that which is good in your approach, in your discussion. Wajadilhum Bilatihi Asan, Surah Nahal, Ayat number one, two, five. And argue with them, debate with them in a good way. Okay? So here this is how Rasulullah is applying Al Wala Wal Bara. It's not hate-filled, showing hatred, enmity, aggression, uh, you know, screaming, making fists, aggressive banners, carrying out suicide attacks potentially. Not that I'm linking that to this ideology, but you can see how people who don't have the uh, teachers around them can then take this type of ideology and take it to the next level. Okay. Uh, so this is a misinterpretation. So when people say Islam uh, is leading to this, Islam is not because here you are seeing a true representation of Islam, uh, which is, as we've called it, the sound understanding of al wala wal bara, which will hopefully uh, make things clear. And Surah Baqarah, ayat number 83, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, 
and say to the people good things. Linnas. They do say, Wakulu lil muslimin. Wakulu linnas. Speak, say to the people good things. Okay, don't say aggressive things, words of hate, words of anger. Uh, that's not the way. Okay, and you are still fulfilling al wala wal bara. Okay, you're still fulfilling it. But we still raise the question of how is it that the, some of those verses which quite clearly said not to befriend and not to have any connections and not to be sharing secrets with them. Another example in Taif when the Prophet Sallallahu and if you're following the Sirat al Khatim al Nabiyin series which is on Ikra TV and on our YouTube channel, you'll know that, I don't know what stage it's at at the moment, but uh, recently I recorded that when Rasulullah felt, this was in the last couple of years whilst in Mecca, and he had tried his utmost to get people within Mecca to accept Islam and he was really struggling and people were, you know, Allah had like sealed the hearts and there was no one more. He then took, uh, he needed protection as well, he had already, he'd just lost Khatija Ali Anha, he'd just lost, so his protection in his house had gone, he'd just lost uh, Abu Talib, so his protection outside the house had gone, uh, he was on his own. In that respect, obviously, he always had Allah. And uh, so what he decided to do was to go to this local town at Taif and see if they would provide him some sort of protection. They didn't. Instead, they got their young folk and the slaves to pelt the Prophet As the Prophet is resting in a garden local and he's sort of... Uh, sort of pulling himself together and deciding what to do next and he makes dua to Allah that you know I'm and he blames himself and he says but you know in this circumstances I would prefer your ease rather than your difficulty the angel of the mountain is sent to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ and the angel says I'm at your command if you so desire I will crush this town okay how did the Prophet ﷺ respond how was his al wala wal bara the Prophet ﷺ responds and he says no this is in Sahih Muslim he says, no, I would rather that it could be that from their loins, meaning a future generation, a person may be a Muslim that comes from them. These are individuals who are non-Muslim. Not only non-Muslim, they just attacked him. Okay, they had ridiculed him. Yet his response is so different. So did the Prophet Sallallahu not know about Al-Wala wal -Bara? Of course he did. So clearly he's acting upon it in the way that we should be acting upon it, very different than the hatred which is being espoused by this other view. How did the Prophet behave at Mecca? Do you remember, let's not forget, and you know, I'm very conscious of time, and I know I'm repeating myself, uh, but I do not, you know, I really want to close in a half an hour's time. I'm not sure if that's going to be possible, but that's my aim. Uh, worst case, I might borrow 50 more minutes of your time, but inshallah, that's my plan. When the Prophet remember in Mecca, these are those people who, who exiled him. These are people who ridiculed him. These are people who laughed at him when his sons passed away. These are people who, um, who, who uh, mutilated, first of all, killed his uncle, uh, Hamza Raleigh, and then mutilated his body. These are people who exiled him so that people would not trade with him. These are people who forced him to live in uh, uh, valleys uh, out near Mecca and there was no food provided for them and they would eat whatever they could get their hands on. These were people who had tortured and killed companions of the Prophet Sallallahu These are people who, who called him a, a, an insane man, who had called him a, a liar and a deceiver. These are those sorts of people. Okay? These are those people who had attacked the Prophet Sallallahu and forced his uh, face helmet to be crushed into his face Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are those people who martyred, uh, you know, a, 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 nearly a hundred Sahaba in Uhud. These are those people, let's not forget the, the 10, 12, 14 years or so, 15 years, uh, and in fact, close to 20 years really, if I'm accurate, close to 20 years of oppression and killing and attack. Finally, the Prophet ﷺ is granted victory and he now walks into Mecca. Let's see how he responds with his al wala wal bara. How does he say? is mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu um, this is, comes in Sunnah Bihaqi, that he says, Man dakhala daruhu, whoever enters their home, for who that person is safe. Wa man dakhala masjid, for who I mean, that person who goes into the masjid, he's safe. Wa man dakhala dara abi Sufyan, then he is safe. Then he addressed them and he says, Ma tazunnu anni fa'alukum bikum. What do you think you're gonna do to, what do you think, uh, 
um, I'm going to do to you. How did they respond? They said, you are an honorable brother. You are a son of an honorable brother. And the Rasulullah said, Idhabu antum. Go, you are free. You are not going to be attacked in any way. Did the Prophet not know about Al-Wala wal bara that he was supposed to show hatred to them. He is supposed to show, uh, f you know, anger to them. They have done things which nobody has done. They have killed the companions of the uh, Prophet This is a serious thing. They had tried every single thing. Let's not forget Khandak. Uh, they have tried every single thing to stop the Prophet from preaching. Everything. How is the Prophet dealing with them? He is letting them go. He is forgiving them. Um, and we have another as well. Lama Fatah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Makkah man ala ahliha. He did not force them to accept Islam either. Okay. Wallam yaslahana minhum hal aslam. And he never went around and said, have you accepted Islam? Have you accepted Islam? He didn't go around doing that either. He left them as they were. And he called them and he, he just let them be to act upon that. And when, we, when this Yom al-Fath takes place, the people, some of the Ansar said themselves, they said, al yoma yoma al-Malhama. That this is going to be a day, a day of massacre. A day of massacre. Everybody is going to be killed in Makkah. Do you know, do you know what these people have done? The sins they have committed. There is no forgiveness for them. Um, in, we noted just earlier that the Prophet did not go around asking people who had converted to Islam. So those who were secretly still munafikun or those who were secretly still mushrikeen, they could have been. They could have been. The Prophet never carried out a surge and said, right, gather the companions, right, either force people to accept Islam or find out who hasn't and put, put a sword to him. And this, some of the Sahaba thought that. But the way the Prophet said, Bal yawma yawmul marhama, this is a day, a day of mercy. This is mentioned and uh, 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 narrated by uh, Hafiz ibn Hajjir Asqalani in his Fatul Bari, that this is a day, a day of mercy. So can you not see how al wala wal bara is being acted upon in actual day-to-day -day basis? Even when his people did what they did to him, how did the Prophet respond? This is in Sahih ibn Hibban and in Tabrani he says, Allah maghfir li qawmi fa innahum la yalmun. Oh Allah, forgive my people because they did not know. Okay, they did not know. So one can see how clearly, and there are other narrations as well, the time of Ahl Dos as to what happened there. But as I've mentioned to you, I think that's sufficient uh, to make my point. We saw another individual who came when the Prophet ﷺ, uh, was returning from a ghazwa and they settled in a valley and they, all the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ went and found shade under trees and the Prophet ﷺ hung his, hung his sword rather and he lay under a, uh, lay under a, a tree for shade for, for, for a mid-noon nap and as he wakes he notices a, a man, a Bedouin, holding the Prophet's sword, uh, uh, waving it above him and as he did that the Prophet ﷺ stirred and woke from his sleep. And this man says to him, May yamna o kaminni, who is gonna save you now, O Messenger of Allah? The Sahaba are asleep, the sword is literally next to your neck. All it takes is me to thrust it and you're dead and I can disappear. How did the Prophet respond? He said, Allah, Allah, Allah. This wasn't an answer that he was expecting. The man shook for sakata saif me, yeah, the sword dropped from his hand. So the Prophet now picks up the sword. Okay, al wala wal bara. If we looked at certain people's ideology, kill him, show enmity to him, show hatred to him. This is part of your Iman, O Messenger of Allah. This is what you do. Did, is that what he did? So the Prophet took this sword. He says, May yam no minni, who's gonna save you? Who's gonna save you now? But how did the Bedouin res respond? Because he knows the sort of person he says, Kun khayra akhidin, you'd be better than the one who, you know, uh, better than the one who took it, meaning you are superior to me. So the Prophet then said to him, Atashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ani Rasulullah, do you bear witness that I am uh, the, uh, the uh, that is no deity worthy of worship and I'm the Messenger of Allah? Uh, do you do that? So the Bedouin says, La, no, I don't. I don't accept you as my Nabi. Did the Prophet then force him? Uh, hold on a second here, let me get this sword back out. What did you say? Did you force him? And he said, No. He said, Fine. This is like Rahifiddin. There's no compulsion in religion. If you don't accept it, you don't accept it. Allah is not going to give you Hidayat at the moment. But he did say, La, walakin, walakin ni ahad, I, will bear, I will take a covenant with you. I will give you a treaty, an agreement. Allah ukatil, that I will not fight you. If ever our paths cross in the future, I will never fight you. And neither would I join an army that's fighting you, O Prophet Muhammad. So the Prophet forgave him, pardoned him, and let him go.
So when the Bedouin returned to his people, he said, I've come from a person who is the best of mankind. Okay, best of mankind. This is a, Imam Tirmidhi narrates this and he considers it to be Sahih. So, Al Wala Wal Bara. We're now seeing time and time again plenty of examples that I've given you and many examples that I've left out. Uh, because of the reason, because of already wish coming close to two hours. I've obviously been doing this in one sitting, sipping on some water. I'm sure, you know, you, some of you are trying to even try to do the half an hour sittings and it's, it can be a lot. But I hope I've done enough to demonstrate my point to you. Uh, we know about Thumana ibn Uthal al-Hanafi who was sent to uh, uh, assassinate the Prophet wasallam, And the Prophet did not kill him. And he's coming to kill them. He did not kill him. What did he do? He left him in the masjid. He tied him up there and he watched the Muslims for three days. And with that, Hidayat came into his heart. And uh, because the Prophet was good to him, and then he became a Muslim. And uh, he bathed and uh, he stayed there. Um, so, this, you know, here we go. This is how is the Prophet dealing with these people? Very different. Um, the Prophet would go to him and say, you know, uh, are, you, are you ready to accept Islam? He says, no, no, not at all. And it was only on the third day, he says, Ya Muhammad, wallahi ma kana al-ardi wajhun abghadu ilayya min wajhi. Uh, you know, oh Muhammad, your face, and I feel sad to say this, but this is the narration, that your face used to be the most hatred to me on the face on the face of this, surface of this earth. As for this morning, your face, ahabbu wujuhu kulluha. Your face is the most beautiful of faces towards me. And wallahi ma kana min deenin, and the deen was the most hatred of deen to me. This morning, this deen, ahabbu deen. This is the most beloved deen to me now. Um, and this city used to be Abghadu ilayya, the most hatred city that I had. Now this morning I wake up, this is the most, the most beautiful city that I have. And this, is, this whole story is mentioned in great length in both Bukhari and in Muslim. So we can see here again a very different nature uh, that the Prophet ﷺ is taking with respect and how he is applying Al Wala Wal Bara. Similarly, we see uh, the head of the Munafikun, Ibn Salul, when he is being buried, the Prophet ﷺ removes his garment and places it on him and makes dua for him and buries him. Remember, this is the head of the hypocrites, okay? He is known for spreading the room of Aisha, anha, the Ifki Aisha. He harmed the Prophet greatly. He harmed Aisha anha, greatly. Yet, this is how the Prophet ﷺ, he also went out with the Prophet to go to Uhud and then he returned back with his men which was roughly a third of the soldiers in order to dishearten the Muslims many many others yet here is the Prophet ﷺ going to do that and when he did that a verse was revealed which mentions um, that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, applied his saliva as well um, he placed this uh, over him and when he went, he said, uh, a verse was revealed, Surah Tawbah, ayat number 80, Istaghfir lahum, o la tastaghfir lahum, lahu, istaghfir lahum, o la tastaghfir lahu, in tastaghfir lahum, sab'ina marra, falay yaghfir lahu lahum. So this is Surah Tawbah, ayat number 80, uh, that if you seek forgiveness for them, or you don't seek forgiveness, then um, even if you were to seek forgiveness for them 70 times, then Allah will never forgive them. The Prophet said, That's If I knew that saying istighfar for more than um, 70 times, they would have been forgiven, I would have said it more. I would have said it more. Also, the, um, the, uh, the tr agreement which was reached in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, uh, that's also a thing. The Treaty of Medina, you can see here, where's Al Wala Wal Bara? You'll see in, in the Treaty of Medina, the first sort of literally constitution that was written, there's a pact between the Muslims of Quraysh and the people of Yathrib and those who will follow them and will become attached to them politically. So, where is Al Wala Wal Bara now? Here you're clearly seeing Muslims working with non Muslims here and coming together on agreed points. The emigrants from Quraysh shall be responsible for their own and they shall, according to their former approved practice, jointly pay the blood money in mutual collaborations and every group shall secure the release of their prisoners by paying ransom. Um, and it mentions the various tribes, Banu Of, uh, Banu Harith, uh, Banu Sa'ida, Banu Jusham, Banu Najjar, Banu Amr, Banu Nabid, Banu Aus, and uh, indiscriminate so every group shall secure the release of its captives ensuring that an indiscriminate rule of law and justice is applied amongst the believers 
Um, a believer shall not form an alliance with the associate of another believer without the latter's consent. Uh, there shall be collective resistance by the believers against any individuals who rise in rebellion, attempts to acquire anything by force, violate any pledge or attempts to spread mischief amongst the believers. Such collective resistance against the perpetrator shall occur even if he is the son of any one of them. So look at the system that the Prophet is, is building in. A believer should not kill another believer in retaliation for an unbeliever nor help an unbeliever against a believer. So this is the Al-Wala Wal-Bara is when matters of religion comes up when it's religious issues and we're going to pick up on this point guarantee of equal rights of life protection for all the muslims uh, the uh, non-muslim minorities have the same right of life protection like muslims a jew who obeys the state shall enjoy the same rights of life protection as the believers do as long as they are not wronged by him uh, the jews and he does not help others against them absolute equal rights where's hatred is this an expression of hatred that the Prophet is allowing the Jewish community to continue to live there? There are episodes where the Jewish community or parts of the Jewish community were ex expelled from Medina, but there were reasons for that. And what people are doing is taking specific cases and generalizing. And this is the problem. There are were reasons for that. And we're now beginning to see a pattern that when it comes to... So this was a political decision to exile certain Jews because they were actually undermining the authority of the state. They were actually challenging the authority of the state. Um, and likewise, when it came to uh, coming together on matters of religion, that's when it became sort of problematic. Wars. So we're now seeing possibly... And I'm, and I'm kind of sort of preempting the conclusion. What these verses of Al Wala Wal Bara, in which it's quite clear, the ones that I quoted to you, that these are in reference to matters of a time of war, okay? Where particularly war used to be based when it was based on religion. <laughs> Yes, I can follow.